One of the really cool things about selling airsoft guns every day is you get to hear all of the weird reasons why people buy airsoft guns and some of the non-traditional uses that they have for them that you probably wouldn't expect. For instance, we have one lady that has an in-ground pool that was having trouble with geese landing in the water. They would basically crap in the pool and wreck the pool filter and it was costing her a lot of money. So she wanted a way to chase the geese off without actually killing them. So we suggested selling her an airsoft gun with biodegradable BBs which allowed her to chase the geese off and since the BBs would dissolve in the water she wouldn't have any residue left in the pool so her problem was solved. You get the idea people use these things for a lot of weird reasons most people buy them for stuff like you would expect like they want to get a gun that's as realistic as possible so they can get a little trigger time without having to spend a dollar around at the actual target range and for those people we feature the most realistic guns in the way of rifles which are the gas blowback rifles for airsoft. Now before we get too far along in the video and start talking about the rifles, it's important to note that shooting green gas blowback rifles are probably the most expensive way to shoot airsoft guns. And I say that in relative terms because if you consider comparing that to shooting actual firearms where you're going to a target range and shooting 5.56 or 223 ammunition, you're going to be spending about a dollar, dollar twenty-five, buck fifty, two dollars a round depending on where you go to shoot. So by comparison shooting airsoft guns is fairly inexpensive, but if cost is a concern Consideration, you may want to consider going out and getting one of the propane adapters for the green gas guns. This basically allows you to adapt standard propane canisters to using them for airsoft green gas guns rather than having to go out and spend the $16 a can, you can go out and spend about $2 a can and just buy it at the hardware store. Now I know you subscribers have heard this all before so just bear with me for the guys that have never heard this. If you're thinking about going to propane versus green gas, the only difference between propane and green gas is generally this has an odor to it, this does not. So this stuff you can shoot indoors, this stuff if you try to shoot it indoors it's going to smell like the cat farted. The other difference is that the bottled green gas comes with silicone pre-mixed into it so that it lubricates the gun. So if you're going to get propane, go ahead and buy some of the plastic friendly uh, silicone oil that's out there so you can squirt it into it, that way it lubricates the gun as you're shooting it. That's the only major difference. So if you're shooting indoors and doing CQB, just use the regular green gas. If you're shooting outdoors and you want to save a few bucks, go ahead and get the propane option. So if total realism is what you're after, then you're going to want to look into the first gun that we're going to talk about today, and that's the King Arms M4 gas blowback. The King Arms M4 is a full metal gas blowback airsoft rifle. One of the first things you're going to notice when you pick up this gun is that all of the controls on the gun actually function like the actual firearm. I know there's a lot of guns out there that have all the controls on it, but they don't actually do anything. They're just there for aesthetic purposes and don't serve any particular function on the firearm. On this gun, all of the controls actually serve the same purpose that they do on the actual firearm. So when you pull back on the cocking handle, it actually drops the door and the full bolt carrier does move back in the gun. It does have the bolt catch on the port side, so you actually can lock the bolt back in its rearward position for when you're doing mag changes and when you shoot your last round it locks back just like the actual gun. It also has the forward assist which actually does operate on the bolt carrier group to push it forward so it's very realistic. It also has all the standard controls like the magazine release, the selector switch and the adjustable sights but given that all of the other controls actually function like a real M4 give you a level of realism that you normally don't get in like an AEG or a cheaper airsoft gun. The next thing that's going to be really apparent when you go ahead and pop the pins and field strip this gun is, well, hey, number one, this actually field strips like an actual M4 or M16. There's a lot of AEGs out there that actually slide apart. This opens up just like a standard M4 or M16 for field stripping. You're also going to notice that all of the components inside of the receiver are almost identical to what you would expect inside of an actual firearm. So in the lower receiver you have the full trigger group with all of its components. In the upper receiver you can actually remove the bolt carrier group and the charging handle, pull out just like a standard M4 or M16, and you have the full buffer tube with the spring. So in general this gun operates surprisingly realistically like an actual M4 or M16. 
As far as the stats on this gun, it weighs in at around four and a half pounds and gives you an average velocity of around 450 feet per second, which is probably a little hot for you guys that are doing the indoor CQB stuff, which you're kind of limited to around 300 to 350 feet per second. So you may want to stick with doing outdoor shooting from this particular gun. It gives you a mid cap magazine, which holds both the gas as well as the BBs. And since it's a mid cap, it only holds around 30 rounds. So you're going to want to get several magazines so that you can do some mag changes. That's one of the big problems with this gun is that the mags are going to run you about 50 bucks a piece. So it's a little bit cost prohibitive when you're buying the magazines. But if you want a gun that's realistic in the way that it shoots and the way that it loads and the way that it field strips, you may want to consider the King Arms M4. Now for all you fans of the more exotic guns that are out there, you may want to consider looking into the WE version of the FN SCAR L. Now the SCAR L is a very M4-ish looking airsoft gun. In fact, it uses standard M4 style magazines. I say style in that all of the guns we're talking about today in the way of gas blowbacks pretty much use a proprietary magazine. So you need to be prepared to buy magazines that are made specifically for each gun that we're talking about today. So you're not gonna be able to pop them out of the SCAR and put them in your King Arms, even though they're both M4 Stanag mags, they only work in one particular gun. Also, it's important to note that all the mags in these guns are mid caps today. So if you're a big fan of the high capacity magazines, you may wanna stick with your electric blowback guns or your standard AEGs because generally gas blowback rifles are limited to mid cap magazines. Now the SCAR L may look like an M4, but it's actually an entirely different gun than the standard M4. In fact, most of the parts are not interchangeable between SCARs and M4s in the real world of firearms. The SCAR is different in that it uses a gas piston system rather than the M4's gas system for actually charging the gun. So in general, the SCAR L is a completely different gun that just happens to look like an M4. Now one of the more visible differences between the SCAR and the M4 is the stock arrangement on the SCAR L. First of all, both guns give you an extendable stock. The only difference between the SCAR L and the M4 is that the release on the SCAR is located on the port side to extend the stock this way. It also has an adjustable cheek piece where you can raise and lower it so that you can get a good cheek weld depending on whether you're shooting with optics or with iron sights. The third difference is that this is a full side folding stock, so it actually folds down and becomes a little bit smaller than an M4. Obviously you can't do this with an M4 because it has the buffer tube on it and you cannot fold the stock down. A SCAR you can actually fold it down and make it a little more compact for doing CQB. Now the M4 and the SCAR have a lot of parts in common, which include basically the same pistol grip as the M4 and the M16. It also has the same bolt catch release in the same location as the M4 and the M16. So if you've trained on an M4, this is gonna feel very familiar to you. It also has the same selector switch in the same spot as the M4. The only difference is the SCAR gives it to you in an ambidextrous format, so you can use it either left-handed or right-handed. It also has the magazine release, which is in an ambidextrous format, so you can release the magazine from either side of the gun. Another difference between the SCAR and the M4 is the location of the cocking lever, which is located on the upper receiver on a SCAR L. So if you're used to cocking your gun back here on an M4, it's going to feel a little weird reaching over the gun to cock it, but it's something that you get used to pretty quickly. One of the really cool things about the SCAR is that it gives you a lot of the custom features that you would have to add onto an M4 or an M16 at an additional cost. They come standard on this particular model, which include the quad rail so that you can add additional accessories like scopes, lasers, flashlights, forward grips, all that kind of stuff. It has a folding sight system so that if you're adding optics to the gun and you want to fold your sights down out of the way, you can fold them down, which is a rear aperture and front post configuration, which is adjustable for windage and elevation. The controls for it are pretty intuitive. If you're used to an M4, they work almost exactly in the same way as a standard M4 sight. As far as the stats on this gun, it weighs in at around seven and a half pounds. So it's about two and a half pounds heavier than the King Arms M4. It gives you an average velocity of around 400 feet per second. So you're sacrificing about 50 feet per second versus the King Arms. But for that, you're getting a lot more custom accessories on the SCAR L than you are on the standard M4. Our third gun we're gonna talk about today is the budget-oriented shooter's version of a gas blowback rifle, and that is the G&G Combat Machine Gas Blowback M4. 
Now the combat machine gives you a lot of the features that you see in the more expensive guns at about half the price of what you'd pay for some of the guns that we've talked about today. Now it's not made out of full metal like the other guns, but it does have a lot of metal parts which include the barrel assembly is made out of metal as well as the buffer tube is also a full metal assembly. The rest of the gun is pretty much a high quality nylon fiber which is a lot better than the PVC and the ABS plastics that you see in a lot of the cheaper guns that are out there. Now the combat machine saves you a lot of money in that the upper and lower receiver of this gun are a standard AEG design compared to the other guns we talked about today which pretty much have their own unique design to make them gas blowbacks. G&G is saving us all a lot of money by using the same standard setup that they use for their AEGs so they don't have to retool their entire factory in order to make a gas blowback gun which saves us all a lot of money. Now the combat machine gives you a lot of the same features that you see in the more expensive gas blowback guns, which include the fully functional charging lever which allows you to cock the gun. You'll notice that the dust cover actually drops down on the ejection port and you'll notice that the bolt actually moves inside of the gun when you fire it. So it gives you a feeling of recoil when you're actually firing the gun. Now the only real sacrifices on the combat machine is the fact that number one, the bolt catch doesn't do anything, and number two, the forward assist is really only there for aesthetic purposes. But when you consider the fact that this gun costs at least half of the other guns that we've talked about today, I think it's a reasonable sacrifice to get a gun of this quality for less than the price of what you're going to spend on the other guns. So obviously there's going to be some guys out there that don't want to make any kind of compromises on their airsoft guns. And quite frankly, that's why we carry more than one version of gas blowback so everybody can get exactly what they want when they come here. If you've got any more questions on any of the guns that we've showed today, or if you just want to come in and try them out for yourself, feel free to stop by the showroom. We'll be glad to get them all out so you can try them out and see exactly which one works best for you and make up your own mind. So remember, like us on Facebook and we'll see you the next time.